Hi there. Welcome back to our video series of building recommendation systems with TensorFlow. My name is Wei, and I'm a developer advocate at Google. In one of our previous videos, we talked about TensorFlow ranking and how to use it together with TensorFlow recommenders to do point-wise, pair-wise, and list-wise ranking. But that's not the full picture. Let me tell you why. In a typical retrieval ranking pipeline, we have a retrieval stage to filter a large pool of candidates before passing only relevant ones into the ranking stage. The retrieval stage is needed because the candidate pool is simply too large, and if you just rank all items directly, it takes too much time and your latency will suffer. That's why we need to have the retrieval stage to shrink down items to rank. But what if you don't have many items in the first place? Or to put it another way, what if your ranking stage can rank all your items within your latency requirements? Do you still need the retrieval stage? The answer is no. In this case, you can just do ranking and leave retrieval out. This is actually a very common question I often get. So hopefully this explanation makes things clear. In terms of tooling, you can either use TensorFlow recommenders to do point-wise ranking or use TensorFlow ranking to perform more sophisticated ranking. So in this video, we're going to demonstrate how to use TensorFlow ranking alone for recommendations. As we mentioned before, TF ranking is an open source scalable learning to rank library that helps you rank a list of candidate items effectively, and it, it is widely used inside and outside of Google. With that background, let's take a look at the code. We're still going to use the familiar MovieLens dataset. And we build up the user ID and movie title vocabularies for embedding layers. Next, we group the rating dataset by user ID to form lists for our ranking model. Let's take a peek at the processed training dataset. In this training example, we have a batched list of user IDs, which are all 405 in this case. We have a list of movie titles and their respective ratings given by the user 405. Next, we define a helper function to unpack the rating dataset and separate the features and labels. Note that we're using dense to ragged batch method because the user ID and movie title lists sometimes are shorter than 100. For example, a user may have given less than 100 ratings. We can take another look at the processed features and labels. With our data ready, we can start to build our ranking model. We define the user and movie embeddings in the init function. In the call method, we compute the dot product of the user and movie embedding. Next, we create the model and compile with the optimizer loss and metrics. Note that here we're using a ranking-specific softmax loss, which is a list-wise loss introduced to promote all relevant items in the ranking list with better chances on top of the irrelevant ones. This is different from the standard softmax loss in the multi-class classification problem, where only one class is positive and the rest are negative. For metrics, we're using NDCG and MRR, which are commonly used metrics. There are, of course, many more losses and metrics available in TF ranking. Please check out our documentation to learn more. Now we can fit the model, and you can see the loss going down. After training, we can get recommendations by passing in user IDs and movie titles, sorting the results by prediction scores, and returning the top ones as recommended items. Before we wrap up today, I want to make a final clarification on the relationship between TF recommenders and TF ranking. I have been asked this question so many times that I think it's important for you to understand the distinctions. TF recommenders focuses on recommendation systems, and it includes tooling and utilities specifically designed for recommenders such as retrieval and ranking tasks. TF ranking focuses on ranking items and can be used beyond recommendation systems. For example, document search, question answering, and so on. 
TF recommenders and TF ranking are basically separate libraries, but they intersect in the ranking stage of recommendation systems. So let me share some rule of thumb with you. If you're doing document search, question and answering, or the like, just go with TF ranking. If you're building recommenders and need a retrieval stage, go with TF recommenders. If you're building the ranking stage in recommenders, you can use either. There's even a bridge between the two libraries so that I can have the best of both worlds. Hopefully, this makes things clear. One last thing I should mention, our colleague Rolf from TF Ranking team gave a fantastic talk at our Recommendation System Dev Summit. I highly recommend watching his session in the link below if you want to learn more about TF Ranking and some cutting edge learning to rank research, such as positional debiasing. With that, thank you very much for watching this video. I'll see you next time.